Guys, welcome back to the show. We are very lucky to have our very special guest here. Um, this is Holly. She looks after, or she's uh, the founder of Smith Street Paleo. Uh, it's something that I eat pretty much every day of my Myself life. Myself as well. Um, Sometimes. For, 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 <laughs> for the last while. So, um, Holly, welcome. Thank you very much. Great to have you on board. Um, great to be talking about all things business. We're going to be discussing how your business came about. We're going to be talking about that process of leaving a job and moving into uh, the entrepreneurship space and everything that goes with that, <laughs> the trials, the tribulations, uh, and all of it. So, um, warts and all, we want to know everything. So, yeah. okay. introduce, introduce yourself. Tell us kind of how it all came about. And let's get into it. All right. Um, so, I have a paleo food company. So, paleo is just a, for me, it's a lifestyle. So, it's cutting out um, certain foods that uh, cause people issues, mm -hmm. such as dairy and gluten. And, uh, yeah, so I started uh, – I used to be cabin crew for Emirates for 13 years. And um, it's, it's a job that works against you health-wise. Okay. Um, you think you feel okay, but, you know, the long haul and the, the missed sleep and stuff like that. So I wanted to feel a bit better. And so I just started reading a lot and researching a lot. And then it, I've always been – keen on cooking so I just started experimenting with trying to make regular food like your normal everyday food and make it paleo but make it taste the same because everyone always thought health food mm. tasted like yep. cardboard or yeah. something, <laughs> Play it in. Or something. Yeah. and uh, so that's where it started so I started uh, just playing around in my own kitchen and doing a lot of research and then um, I did what <laughs> a lot of people do Go on holiday, yeah. eat all the things, yeah. drink all the things. <laughs> and then I came back and I was like, oh, I feel disgusting. Right, that's it. I'm eating clean for a month. Okay. And I did. I, I cut out all the dairy. I cut out all the uh, – there was no bread. There was no pasta. There was nothing. And then by the end of the month, I felt so amazing that there just wasn't any going back. Wow. So okay. that, that was, was it. That was yeah, nice. that was it. That was me done. Wow. So that that's was good. when you started adopting the paleo food – like yeah. system and so that okay. was that was about I guess must have been about twelve years ago. And, and Marx and oh. I have um, my husband and I have eaten that way, yeah, ever since. So for, for, for the people who don't know, uh, yourself and Marcus are kind of like the idols of the fitness community oh. right now, right? So like you're, 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 you're so like embedded in within, of course, the, you know, the fitness community within Dubai and, of, and, and also within the CrossFit community. So there is a, a huge link between like paleo food and CrossFit. Yeah. Is that how it all kicked off for you? Um, well, I guess you just, I started hearing about it. So maybe it was when we started CrossFit, I don't know. CrossFit was still pretty new to us back then. Um, so I think actually the, the paleo came first. Okay. But then, yeah, with CrossFit, they were big advocates of, of paleo eating. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, it, it just became more uh, more known. And, okay. uh, yeah, people became nice. more aware of nice. it. How, how many years before you left Emirates and started out on your own with the business were you... What did this come uh, about? Well, I started, uh, so yeah, let, let's say it's about 12 years ago I, I changed to paleo mm -hmm. um, and I resigned from Emirates about, I think it's three and a half years ago. Okay. So I was doing, I, I was eating this way, I was taking all my own food on flights, I would um, search out things on layovers, mm -hmm. restaurants, cafes, health food shops, that sort okay. of thing. There wasn't a lot of ingredients available here then, so I would like my suitcase would I'd be bringing back all getting sorts. Getting questioned at the Dubai airport, like what yeah. are you yeah. doing yeah. here? What, like, Experiments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, and no, I just started uh, sharing my recipes with um, with people at the gym because I yeah. um, I was that's what I was saying to Jen earlier. I was like. I'd be like, oh, I made these amazing pad thai noodles, but I made it out of zucchini and nice. da -da -da. and they're like, can you? can you share that recipe with me? So I would email, um, okay. you know, people. And then I was emailing one person, two people, three people. And then, yeah. you know, when I started <laughs> emailing loads of people, then uh, that's when Mike said, come on, we'll put it on the on the gym website and maybe I that's remember, a nice yeah, sharing. Yeah, and there was that recipe that section on the, on, yeah. the, on the first website, right? And then that sort of became quite popular. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then it was like, okay, time for my own website. So then we built a website um, and I was still crew at this time. And yep. it was just it was just basically a little bit of fun, like a little 
little bit of a blog and nice. and where I could just share recipes with people. I mean, how many people visited? I have no idea. Yeah. It was probably my my mom and my sister. <laughs> and the, but there was and clearly a few people. A few people. Gym, you built a business out of it, so there was clearly a few people. So so t- take us through the the um, let's say this journey where you see. I mean, a lot of people have these passions. A lot mm. of people start to kind of scratch that itch and and. There are many business books out there that will say that scratching your own itch is the best way to mm. actually find um, what it is that you might then end up building a business. Because it's mm. something that obviously it frustrated you personally. You you didn't have what you wanted in the in the food space in the, mm. in the in the local market. You saw that there was more of a you know your friends started to engage with that as well. And now you start to see okay, well my passion is starting to actually resonate with other people. Mm. And then there's obviously a tipping point there where you're like. I can build a business out of this. Yeah. And then it goes through to where you are now, and, and we'll get onto that in a second. But take us through that process, because you know, I've, I've gone through that process personally. Yeah. Dia's been through that process. It, it, it always happens in different ways, but mm. there's always the, the scratching of the, of the personal itch that then develops into something that's a bit more substantial. So take us through your journey in that space. So I guess it was, um, how can I put it? I mean, there's a lot of people that have a passion, and I, and they want to turn it into a job. Mm. And I guess there's that you have to be conscious of that. Is, is it a good idea or not? Mm. But there's it also exactly this is a difference between turning it into a job and turning it into a business. Yeah, well, Because you can, cre- you can well, create yeah. a big job for yourself yeah. and, you're, and you're, you're handcuffed to it or you can create a business. And those yeah. are different things, right? But, but it, it was, like you said, it was, I, I, was, I was just plugging away at it and I was spending a lot of time creating recipes and taking pretty pictures and, yeah. um, and that sort of thing. And then... And it was exactly like you said. I was getting sort of frustrated because there wasn't anything here. And I'm like, but it's going to come. It's going to come. People yeah. are going to become more aware of being healthy and paleo and, you know, a, a better way to eat and a better lifestyle. And um, I, I'm Australian, obviously. So I was like, it's already kicked off there. Yeah. You know, I used to travel to the US, to, to the UK. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there was there was so much available. Happening there, yeah. And I'm like, well, it's gonna, it's gonna come. So why don't I be at the start of it? Yeah, nice. Um, so that that was the initial thought, um, and I just thought, yeah. So so I think there's there's potential there because it it will get here. Nice. But it's daunting, right? Super daunting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. Th- I think I toyed with the idea and used to joke about it, like all the time. Like you know, every time you go on a go on a holiday and then you had to come back and go to work and I'd be like, yeah. oh, I should just have my own business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I think it went on like that for, for a while. Because we caught up for coffee a couple of times. Yeah, and we that, did. We, we spoke through it and we're like, cool, you're going to do this? <laughs> I need a little bit of comforting and yeah. a <laughs> cuddle. And <laughs> yeah. Nice. I think, I think um. not only that you've actually like turn, turned a passion into a business and th- there's also like a, 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 a new trend that started happening in the food industry mm. in general is the restaurants, especially health food restaurants, are becoming less and less busy. So what I mean is during the week, there's almost like two different crowds. There's a weekend crowd and mm. there's during the week crowd. Yeah. And the, the during the week crowd, we're all busy, you know, working and stuff like this. And the, the comfort of the food arriving to your doorstep is, is yeah. amazing. And that's like on its own is, a, is an amazing it's like utility. It's like convenience, right? Everyone's exactly. so busy these yeah, days. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think like you, you've also like started off this new sort of um, or, or rode the wave of, of the delivery system when it comes to like food and making sure that it's a program that people then sign up to. Mm. So how is that business model supported your business than having, let's say, a physical restaurant, a physical kitchen, um, you know, that you're sort of like paying rent for and stuff like this? Do you think the fact that you've adopted this program kind of like pushed the business further? Yeah, with the you mean with the meal deliveries? With the meal deliveries, yeah, um, yeah, a hundred percent. Because when I started, I had this dream of having a load of products and seeing all my products with my logo all lined up on the supermarket <laughs> shelves, and I could go in and admire it. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. that, that was the idea. This rosy picture of running a business. Yeah. 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 Everything just looks amazing. <laughs> And then the reality hits you in the yeah. face. Yeah, the like, Oscars. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that was the dream. I thought yeah. that's why I, I, you know, I made my label. I was like, it was like black and white. And I thought mm. I could even see, I could see it on the yeah. shelf. All like it's a very really strong st- branding, by the way. It's really good. Yeah, very, very strong brand. It's really good. And, um, but that is a lot harder <laughs> yeah. than, than I anticipated. Um, there's quite a few hurdles to do that. And, um, yeah, it, it, it that part was really, really hard, um, and I'm still working on it 
years later. But uh, and and it hasn't died. That idea hasn't yeah. died. Yeah. It will happen. Well, we're still we're still <laughs> buying that product. Yeah. We just had a conversation. But there's so many more products to come. Yeah.